Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. I'm gonna surprise you all, and we're doing an Orcus deck profile today. I know that's amazing, I know that's something unique and brave and different, and who am I kidding? It's the most common deck I do on this uh, on this channel, so... Uh, this is Orcus Horus by Steel Fiendsmith. It is a mouthful. Um, this is the most competitive way to play Orcus in the current format. It's actually highly efficient. Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through the card by card, explain my ratios, and talk about it as we get through. So, uh, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already. There's a bell. If you want to ring it, it'll let you know when we upload new deck profiles. And don't forget to check out the Discord. Uh, we are trying to be more active in there. Uh, it's been a long host season, and now, here we are, post world. Let's go through this Orcus deck profile, and let's have some fun in the new format. Starting off, we have three copies of the recently released QCR Orgus Tarpor. You don't have to play it in QCR. Obviously, there's there's lower rarity versions of it, but I love this deck, so I have them. Uh, but yeah, Orgus Tarpor, you have to run it at three. It is the lifeblood of the deck. If you open this card, it's actually not a brick. It is actually very useful in almost every hand that this deck produces. So... Uh, it's definitely worth it. I highly re like you. You need to play it at three. Uh, we're playing three copies of Gearsu. It is the only real normal summon in the whole deck. Having it is very beneficial. Um, if you open it, it's not a dead card in hand. And if you don't open it, you're typically summoning it off of our board. So the best starter in the deck in terms of normal summons. Uh, it isn't the best starter in the whole deck, like as a whole. But starting on a blank field with it, you can use it to get into things. There's ways to get into, like, uh, Moon of the Closed Heaven and things like that, uh, just by using its its name. Uh, but you typically you're summoning this off of Harpoor, which kind of you don't get the token for. Uh, we are playing two copies of Orcus Nightmare. This card actually comes up a lot in the battle phase, believe it or not. You could surprise a lot of people by its, its, uh, banish, its dump effect, its foolish burial effect, because it has that boosting effect. It is very possible to use this in the damage step to cheese out games in, in odd situations. Uh, we're playing one copy of Symbol Skeleton. It's Monster Reborn. It's necessary. Uh, one World Wand. It's our DDR. Again, it's necessary. And then we've got Babel and Crescendo, wrapping up the entirety of the Orcist package. It's pretty concise, but yeah, this is, I think, the standard Orcist ratio moving into the current format. Next up is the Fiendsmiths. We got three copies of Engraver, one Fabled Lurry, and one Fiendsmith Tract. This is a very standard ratio. Um, I don't think it works as well without three Engraver. You can run it at two and play Sanct, um, but I don't recommend it. This has been hyper consistent for me, and you can cheese out games with the Fiendsmith package on its own. Next is the Horus. Three copies of Imseti. Uh, Imseti is obviously the draw on the search. One happy, because you've got to be happy. Uh, three copies of King Sarcophagus. And two copies of Walls of the Imperial Tomb. Uh, Walls allows you to get to Imseti. This just helps you deck thin. Uh, this is 45 cards, but you don't want to open um, just unplayable. So by playing this engine a little bigger at nine cards, it actually kind of helps. Uh, the Walls will let you get started by searching out Imseti. King Sark can help you get the Orcus cards out of the hand and into the graveyard. And Imseti obviously just resets your hand, getting itself into the graveyard so you can dump happy and, and you can draw into stuff. Next is the hand traps and the going second cards. We have three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Forehead, uh, because we don't play Fe we don't play Feet Bo Blossom in this house. Three copies of Leol Space Rock, Nibiru, Nibiru, um, yeah, Nibiru. It's better than Droll in the current format because there's less ways to play around Nibiru, um, so. Nib is just really strong. Uh, we are playing the Bice Deals, which at one Magna Hut, one Drew is Worm, one Ball Drake, and one Sarnir. Uh, my reason for playing these is because they're all different names. If I open multiples, it's never going to be like I just have a dead card in hand. I always have a live play, uh, and I wanted to maximize the number of live uh, the number of live plays in the in the deck. Uh, so we played one of each of the Banishers. Uh, which actually really helps because people don't play around, you know, having four. 
So having four different names is actually super efficient. Three copies of Infinite and Permanence. It's the final hand trap of the deck. Uh, it is, what, 10? It's no, it's 13 hand traps. We are still playing some more going second cards, so with the rounding out the deck, we're playing three copies of Forbidden Droplet, two copies of Talent, and one copy of Called By. This is it. I mean, I don't know what else to say, except this is a great lineup. Forbidden Droplet letting you cheese out games. Triple Tactic Talent, which is good enough to rip cards out of the opponent's hand to stop them. Or if you have, if you know, you don't have all their pieces, you can draw two. Or the one I use the most, which is Stealing a Body, because you can link off with it. Um, which is hyper important in this deck. And that's the main. 45 cards. Like I said, it's pretty efficient. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in the extra deck. Two copies of Galatea. Uh, one Long Girsu. Long Girsu uh, is one of the cards that I got to add because Lacry Lacrima is banned. Uh, when Lacrima got banned and Beatrice got banned, it actually made this extra deck a little bit more versatile whilst losing some consistency pieces. So, Longirsu is one of those pieces that I got to get back. It's a way to disrupt your opponent because you can IP into Longirsu and send a card to the graveyard using its effect. Uh, two copies of Dingirsu. Um, we've got Fiendsmith Requiem. You play just to thin out the deck and get into your rank 6 pools. Um, Moon Goddess. Moon of the Clo Closed Heaven. This is probably one of the least used cards in the extra deck, but it does come up. It is a way to get into Requiem which allows you to get into your Fiendsmith plays. And in some instances, this can be more important. Uh, just depends on what knowledge you have of the game at that point. One Necro Equip. Uh, this is here because I play at the rank six pools. Uh, and it just, it, it really does help. For the rank sixes, we play Pilgrim Reaper. This lets us dump five. This card I don't summon a lot, but in certain instances when we can't get into our rank eight, pool, uh, this can be the card that you'll summon. Uh, one copy of Wave High King Caesar. It's two special summon negates. You'll often be summoning this. Uh, we are playing number 90, so if you have the full combo in your hand, you can end with number 90 plus uh, DDD Wave High King Caesar uh, and multiple other interruptions, which is crazy. Uh, the full combo is insane. Uh, one copy of the Zombie Vampire. It, you know, The milling of four is great. Being able to steal a body is super nice, or being able to summon a body of your own, also really good. Uh, one IP, one SP. Um, you'll summon SP a lot. You summon IP as part of the standard combo. Uh, this is the like the perfect end board piece for this deck because you have so many targets of what you can go into with IP. It doesn't have to just be SP always. Sometimes you'll use IP going first or going second to be able to use it to make access code talker. And with the access code talker being protected from destruction and having the 4,000 attack, it can be enough. SP is an excellent board breaker. It's good going first or second. It's one of the most versatile cards in the game. And last, but certainly not least, is an access code talker. Uh, access code talker is just to win games. It's a way to help facilitate games quickly and ending games. So that's it for the extra deck. On to the side deck. Uh, normally, I don't do the side deck on this channel, but I think I, it's important to show you guys what I'm thinking. So we're playing three copies of Drill and Lickbird. Three copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasmane. One Feather Duster with two Lightning Storms. Three Cosmic Cyclones. And three Cross Out Designators. Uh, I'm playing Designator if I'm going against... Like, Designator is here strictly to play against uh, certain hand trap decks, like decks that, like, Snake Eye. Because we have so many cards in common, I can do it, and it doesn't negatively impact me because I have so many other options. It also allows me to play through things like Ash Blossom, uh, Nibiru... And you could side, like, Dimension Shifter if you're dealing with a lot of, like, D-Shifter decks. It's a great option. Allows you to kind of play the game. But, lads, that's going to do it for today's Orcist deck profile. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this deck, like you guys all know, it's my favorite. It's on the channel a lot. And this version of it is hyper-explosive, really consistent, and scary good. So, try it out for yourself. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. And until next time, lads, good fun. Have luck.